Hi guys, welcome to our latest PaleoScan tips and tricks video. My name is Tom Wilson. Uh, for this video, I'm going to take you through a few different hints uh, for dealing and interpreting with seismic data which has very steeply dipping reflectors. For those of you familiar with PaleoScan, you may have attempted to build a model grid and a relative geological time model from a seismic data set such as this, where we have very steeply dipping stratigraphy. You may have noticed that the initial automatic result, that is the model grid interpretation, may have been a little bit less complete than you would have liked. There are some parameters that we have in PaleoScan to help us deal with situations like this. For this tips and tricks video, I'll take you through those parameters and how we can tailor them to produce a better initial automatic interpretation from a data set which features geology such as this. Okay, so most of the issues that you will encounter uh, in PaleoScan when we're dealing with a seismic data set which has steeply dipping stratigraphy arise from the creation of the model grid. So this is what we're going to have a look at first. So generally when we go to create a model grid in PaleoScan, uh, we have a few parameters that we can choose and alter in order to get a, a different resolution model grid. And these parameters here can actually have a big impact on how the initial automatic interpretation will behave in zones of highly uh, steeply dipping reflectors. So when we go to build our model grid, uh, for those of you not familiar with PaleoScan, the model grid is sort of the heart of the software. This is the, the framework that we use to produce a full volume automatic interpretation. Uh, and this is what you'd interact with most of the time as an interpreter in the software. So this uh, window here is our model grid creation window. This is where we can specify some different parameters which go into the creation of that model grid. So when we're dealing with seismic data which has very highly steeply dipping stratigraphy, uh, we want to tailor some of these parameters in order to get a better result for the initial model grid and the automatic interpretation that comes with it. So here we have these very steeply dipping beds Using the default parameters in PaleoScan, that is a patch size of 7 and a polarity of peak and trough, the initial result in a zone such as this uh, may not be so complete. So here I'm just running a preview of the model grid and the relative geological time model uh, in this zone here around my cross navigation mouse. And you can see that the initial relative geological time model is pretty gappy. We've got a lot of problems here. It's not as complete as we would like uh, or hope for from an initial interpretation. So to produce a more complete interpretation in a zone like this, we need to do something about these parameters here. So we need to change something about either the input data or the parameters that go into the creation of the model grid. So using these default parameters here, that is a patch size of 7 and peak and trough, our model grid that we will produce from these two parameters looks a bit like this. So this is just a preview of that model grid and only showing you in one specific location. But essentially these two parameters build a grid like this. The software will then take that grid and produce an automatic interpretation uh, based on the correlation threshold and some things like this, which I'll talk about in a second. But essentially, the geometry of this grid is controlled by these two parameters. So the patch size and this polarity option. So the polarity option is very straightforward. We have a node or a yellow dot here, these patches, on every peak and every trough throughout this little section here. So using that uh, parameter there, the polarity, uh, we have a node, a, one of these yellow dots on every peak and every trough. So this is the default option here for the polarity, peak and trough. We can actually get a node at a much more dense spacing by changing that polarity option to something else. So these are the options we have here for the model grid. And we can actually change this to peak, trough, and zero crossing. And this is probably what I recommend in a zone such as this. And for the best resolution uh, in the model grid, in the vertical direction anyway, is to change this polarity parameter to peak trough and zero crossing. So with that option toggled on, if I bring back the preview and run it one more time in this zone, we'll see how that preview has impacted uh, the uh, geometry of the relative geological time model, which is this object here. So we now have a node on every peak, every trough, every zero crossing, and you can see that the relative geological time model is already more complete. It's already looking a lot more geologically realistic. And just by changing that one parameter, we're starting to get a much better result in this location. So that's one of the first things you may want to try if you're not getting a, a, a good result uh, in zones where you have very steeply dipping stratigraphy. The other option there that you might want to play with is the patch size. So this is essentially how closely spaced these, gr uh, these grid nodes are, these yellow dots, in the horizontal direction. So the default here is a patch size of 7, which means we have a node every 7 traces throughout the data set. So you can see if we just focus on the spacing and the horizontal orientation, they're very regularly spaced, and this is actually 7 times my bin spacing. So this is the default, again, is a value of 7, but we can actually decrease this to get a much more densely spaced grid. So if I change this to the lowest possible value, which in PaleoScan 2019 is a value of 3. So this means I will now have a node or a patch 
every three traces, which is very high density, very high resolution. Uh, and this should get a, give us a better result in a zone such as this. So what I've done here is change the patch size parameter to three. If I now run the parameter preview again, we're now gonna get another preview of that model grid inside this zone. And you can see, I, again, I have increased the number of patches or nodes inside this little preview area. And the resulting relative geological time model is again much more complete. So what I've done there is I changed two parameters and gone from the default settings to this now patch size of three and a polarity of peak trough and zero crossing. And just from those two changes, the initial automatic relative geological time model is much more complete, much more geologically realistic inside this zone. So for those of you who have used paleo scan in the past, you may have run into a, a warning or an error where, when you're going to build your model grid. And that warning is that you've hit the limit or the cap on the number of patches that you have available. So previously in PaleoScan, that cap was set to a soft limit of 60 million nodes, so 60 million of these yellow dots. Uh, and that was increased or increasable to 80 million nodes. So that was a hard limit up until uh, this year, in fact. So with the latest version of PaleoScan, which is PaleoScan 2019.2.1, which is available from our website, uh, we have actually now have the ability to increase the number of nodes to 1 billion. So this was never possible before in PaleoScan. But if you would like to go above the previous cap of 80 million, all you need to do is before you create your model grid, you want to go to your tools and then settings. And then you want to come to the model grid tab, this one here. And you can see you have this option here for the maximum number of patches. So the default here is 60 million. Previously, we could take that to 80 million. Uh, and now you can see we can actually go above. So the new limit is 1 billion. So we can go very, very high. Uh, and this essentially allows you to produce a model grid of the highest resolution on uh, essentially any size of data set or a very, very large data set anyway. So I've now increased this patch number to 1 billion. There's a small warning here just saying that it may have some impact on the reliability of the software. Um, but what this means is we can now decrease our patch size to a, a value of 3, which is the, as low as we can go. We can increase our polarity to peak trough and zero crossing, which means we can get this very high density spaced uh, model grid on a data set of any size essentially now. Okay, so some other options we have available to us when we're creating the model grid uh, that can help us get a better result where we have steeply dipping reflectors like this. Uh, so we just took a look at the model grid parameters. So these parameters here under the model grid heading, they control the resolution of this model grid object. So the spacing of those patches essentially. So having those nodes or those patches uh, closer together generally gives a better result in most situations, but that is including situations where we have uh, steeply dipping reflectors such as this. Other options that we have available to us here uh, include data filtering options. So under the model grid, these parameters here control the resolution of this grid. Under this heading here, which is data filtering, these parameters actually take the input volume here and manipulate it in some way. PaleoScan will then use that manipulated volume to build the model grid. So this, initial, this first parameter here is a smooth parameter. So this will take that seismic volume and smooth it and then use that smooth volume to build the model grid. Because that smooth volume, the signal is a little bit more similar, a bit more continuous, PaleoScan will have an easier time of performing that initial autocorrelation and autopropagation to build uh, the relative geological time model that we see as part of the initial automatic interpretation. Some other options we have here include undersampling. So this is essentially taking that input volume and decimating it. So by decimating the volume, PaleoScan will ignore certain data in order to build the, the model grid faster. Uh, but we can also use this to sort of manipulate how PaleoScan will build the model in areas where we have steeply dipping stratigraphy like this. So the main parameter that will help us in this situation is actually this vertical undersampling option. So we can take a data set like this where we have very steeply dipping beds. If we undersample that volume, the software will have an easier time of performing the autocorrelation inside this zone. So if I take this undersampling option here and I change it from a value of one to two, PaleoScan will ignore every second sample in the vertical direction. So we essentially go from say a four millisecond sample rate, which this data set has, to an eight millisecond sample rate. So by increasing this vertical undersampling parameter to two, if I now run the test parameters option, PaleoScan will take that seismic volume, perform an undersampling on it in the vertical orientation here. It will then create a model grid on that undersampled volume and hopefully produce uh, a more complete model for me. So if I am having trouble building a relative geological time model where the beds are steeply dipping 
like this data set, uh, it may be an option for you to actually vertically undersample that data set and the software will probably have an easier time of performing the auto propagation and the correlation along these highly uh, steeply dipping beds.